to open the terminal window from anywhere on the desktop, you have to either click on the terminal icon on the menu, or you can press the Ctrl Alt T combination on your keyboard to open it. Let's analyze the prompt on the left side of the line. It shows the username I used to authenticate with, which is Kali. Next, we have the host name, which is Kali as well. Now, if you want to quickly change the user, then you can use the SU command, which stands for switch user, followed by the username that I want to choose. Next, I will enter the password for the root user. Now, after switching the user, look closely on the right side of the line. It shows the current directory. Here, it shows that I'm inside the home directory of the Kali user. If I want to change to the home directory of the root user, then I can execute the cd command followed by the tilde sign, which stands for the current user home directory. In other words, it's the slash root folder. And I can confirm it by executing the pwd command. Next, I will list the files and directories using the ls command. By default, a brand new user home directory will contain a desktop folder that has the files that you want to save on your desktop. The downloads folder is for internet downloads. The pictures folder is to save some pictures and screenshots. The public folder is used to share files with other system members. The videos folder is obviously to store video files and so on. The names here are self-explanatory. You get the point. Now take note that I already created three files. Test.txt, test1.txt, and printout.sh. In fact, I created them on purpose for this lesson. For example, if I want to execute the printout.sh file, I don't need to write the whole name. I can stop at the middle and then hit the tab key on my keyboard and it will complete the rest for me. You can apply this concept to any file. In fact, this is very practical when we don't know the complete name of the file. We just have to type a few words and hit the tab key. Another example. I know that I created a test text file. If I write cat test and hit tab on my keyboard, this time it shows me two options to choose from. Why? Because I have two files that start with the same name. All I have to do is to keep hitting the tab key to choose the file that I want to execute. To clear the screen, I will write clear or control L key on the keyboard. Now let me show you a trick if you ever forgot the keyboard shortcuts or you want to have your own. Go to the file menu, then select preferences and from the list, choose shortcuts. And voila, here are all the keyboard shortcuts for handling the terminal window. I'll close this and go back to the terminal window. One of the important things to know is how to use the help for a specific executable binary. Let's take an example for the cat command. In order to know the different options and what they mean, all I have to do is to write the name of the command in question and add the tag tag help after. Now, if I ever forgot about an option, I can use this page to get the job done. This is also applicable to the penetration testing tools. We can't always remember all the options for each tool, right?
Another way to get help is to use the man comment, which stands for manual. Look closely that it detected in the history that I already used the manual for the cat comment in the past. To autocomplete the suggestion, I will use the right arrow on my keyboard. To scroll down the list, I will use the down arrow key. Then to quit, I will hit the Q character on my keyboard. Another useful comment that I use frequently on the command line is the reboot comment to restart the Kali host. Now I'm using the powerful mighty root user to execute it. But unfortunately, if you don't have the root privileges, then you have to add the sudo comment to it. But let me clarify this point. If you are a low privileged user and the administrator of the system gave you the permission to be a sudo user, then you can prepend the sudo keyword to the comment that you want to execute. Another useful comment is the shutdown command which will turn off the Kali system. In Linux, we use a lot of redirections in the terminal window. For example, to save the output of the ls command into a file, I can redirect the output of the ls command using the greater than character. In practice, you can use this technique to save the command output during the pen test because you'll need to add it to your final report. Take note that you can use the greater than character twice to append to a file instead of just writing or overriding the existing contents. Also, you can do the opposite by printing the text file contents into the terminal window using the less than character. Another thing that is important to learn is the concept of pipe. For example, I will read a file, add the straight slash, then use the grep command to filter out the word test, and finally sort the results. Before we finish this video lesson, I want to show you how to copy and paste the text into the terminal window. The keyboard shortcut is not Ctrl C for copy. Instead, it's Ctrl Shift C. It's also important to know that the Ctrl C is the keyboard shortcut to stop any running program while it's executing. Now, for pasting the text, you guessed it, it's Ctrl Shift V. The final comment for this lesson is to know how to close the terminal window session. It's either typing exit and press enter or using the control D keyboard shortcut. First, I will exit from the root session and then exit completely by closing the Kali user session. That's it for this lesson. Hopefully, you have learned some new techniques to use in practice.